Now, you may have heard of collaborative gaming before, sometimes referred to as improv gaming, where the players and the game master work together to create a world and an adventure that is unique to the table and no individual person is directly the mastermind of the whole event. You may have even seen it on live streams uh, and read about it in books, but how do you do it? Hi, I'm GR and this is Player Base. This is a channel about ludology where we study the dynamics of play and in that regard, we do our best like today to give you some practical applications for how to apply those very same dynamics in your gaming experiences. So the thing about collaborative play that you might be wondering is how do I, as a player or as a game master, engage in that in a way that isn't completely frivolous? Uh, by which I mean, you may have had this experience where you go through the process of adding on to something that someone else added on to, and it's fun, but it quickly becomes way left field and goes haywire really quickly with no attachment to the really meaty verisimilitude of the role-playing game that you were initially starting out with. Well, here we go. Here's the basic trick. You may have heard me mention before on this channel how the rules of a tabletop role-playing game are not really a set of regimented conscriptions so that you know who's winning and who's losing or what the parameters of official play are. More, it gives a general sense of rules of thumb for haptic feedback to give the world that you're living in some sense of verisimilitude. To give an example, in Dungeons and Dragons, you have attack rolls that are numerically the same for swords that are mundane or magic or actual magic or you know giant waves of magma whatever it may be the mechanics of dungeons and dragons gives you the ability to work through what the sense of what it would be like to live in the cause and effect of that type of pseudo western early modern late medieval high fantasy world Whereas in Call of Cthulhu, you have sanity checks, which gives you a sense of what it would be like to uncover some mind-bending aspect of reality in a Lovecraftian early 20th century universe. You see what I'm saying? It's not that necessarily one or the other is a more official guideline for battle chess. It's that they give a flavor in terms of their mechanics to what the pressures and uh, results of actions in those worlds would be. You start out with that as your groundwork for where you go with any given idea. But let me back up, actually. The thing that you need to start out with, really, is that what you do when you come to the table is you go with the very old tried and true method of what's called yes anding. And this works for players as well as game masters. The player or the game master or another player, when it's not your turn, will add something or suppose something about the circumstance and the rest of the team will just run with it and add something to it. The trick to making this not completely ridiculous is to tie in whatever they're doing with the haptic feedback of the rule system. So if, say, you're in a dungeon and you meet a wizard who is quibbling with some orcs as to the price of magic potions. You might have a player who says, um, I seem to remember this wizard uh, cheating me on the price of magic potions before. Okay, yes, and when you mention that, one of the orcs goes, hey, wait a minute, what's the big idea? I thought you were giving us good deals. I thought this was, uh, what's going on? Then the next person who comes into play if it's a player, adds to that, trying to either interject and you know calm the situation down or add another aspect to it. When it comes around for the game master who has to run those characters, what's plausible? That is what you do. You take whatever seems most realistic to you and you run that through the game engine. If that means that the orcs are gonna start to intimidate and uh, be sort of grab handy, you roll an intimidation check for the wizard, for the orcs. 
uh, if you think that the wizard is going to try and leg it, then you roll a, a dash escape of opportunity action. Whatever it is. When that happens, then the next person comes in and says, oh, I tried to grab the wizard. Or maybe they try to trip him. Or maybe they run after him. Or maybe they try to sell some potions to the orc. Whatever it is. You keep going like that, and pretty soon, you have a game that was going in a way that no one could have predicted, and everybody feels engaged and included. It's collaborative, but it's tied within the rules. It's really that simple. So, let me know how this works for you, and we'll see you tomorrow when we talk about, well, I guess you'll just have to wait and see. I'm GR, this is Player Base. Have a good day, everyone. Do, do, do.